Well, hello there, Master Hellish here, and welcome to our Tuesday night Kerbal Let's Play. I'm here, and I forgot the joystick. <laughs> I just turned around, I was about to say, I'm here with my joystick, and I'm ready for some KSP. It's not there. It's not there. Hang on a second, folks. <laughs> I think this has been my most successful rover so far. Early game, early game rover. There we go. Once you take the, oh, where brakes? Well, I had to say that, didn't I? <laughs> well, there we go, folks. Um, it's now back. <laughs> Uh, if we go into uh, Kill Space Program uh, flying mode and I adjust the camera so it works, there we go. The, the, the flight stick is back in business, folks. Fantastic. Fantastic indeed. Okay. So, uh, hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Um, things are good. Uh, Real Fellow says, I got the, the notification on YouTube and jumped on Twitch. <laughs> and you got an ad. Yeah, it's fine, don't worry. I always I always have a... Sh uh, at a bare minimum, I usually have like a minute and a minute and a half on the beginning of my live streams so that people can get on and the I get the ads out of the way before cracking on with the, uh, with the main action. So there we go. Right, now, like I said, it's, today has been... A real rush around. I've been busy with so so many things. It's it's been ridiculous. In addition to kind of work and family and getting ready for YouTube and stuff, um, I've also been speaking to the developer of of Railroot, and we've got some interesting things coming up. Um, some maybe some of my content appearing in other places. Um, for the purposes of the stream, that's apple juice. Um, probably work. So we'll we'll see. We'll see. Thank you very much for the probably. So yeah, um, we'll see. What does Jet say? Fantastics for hellish in the kitchen. When I don't know. You're gonna have to wait another six years. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the since last time. And Jack has kindly set us up with a since last time. But in true rushing around style, I I haven't set it up yet. So what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to go in. And I'm going to have to edit it. So I'll mute it. And I will repoint it to the correct location. And here we go, since last time. So here we go. Uh, our launch in three, two, one, stage. Okay. Got some rubble. Okay. Side boosters are gone. Full throttle. Stage. And stage again. Here we go. Looks like we're going to end up being very close. What's the map say? Okay, so we're nearly at the end, so we're early. Look how much we're going to miss it by. Oh, no we're not! Oh no! Right, looks like we are going to hit the orbit quite nicely, so let's start throttling down. I'm not sure if we're going to do it. The path will change if we get an encounter. We should, yep, there we go. Right, okay, here we go. We're, we're pretty close to the moon now. Now we are in the dark, so we're gonna have to be careful. Okay then, let's warp to see if we can get back again. I think uh, that's a very successful mission there. Here we go. Lock. And that's going to be a million, billion, trillion, squillion science. I don't actually know how much science that's going to be.
There we go, folks. So that that was the since last time. Uh, almond flavored apple juice. You did you know I'm I'm allergic to raw almonds. It's one of the things I have an allergy to. Raw almonds, raw apple, raw cherries. There's other things I can't remember. Um, it's a specific group of foods, and if they're cooked, I'm fine. Right then, yeah, raw apple, but give me apple pie, I'm fine. Apple sauce, I'm fine. Raw apple, uh, no, that's a bad idea. Makes my lips swell, um, my tongue and the, my throat swell up as well. Uh, so it's not good. <laughs> no, 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 raw apple for me. Uh, pear, I think. I can't remember, I'd have to check. I'm usually relatively careful. Um... It's to do with it's to do with the sugars or something in that particular sort of fruit and nut and fine with melon, fine with all of that sort of stuff, fine with banana, all of that sort of stuff. It's yeah, it's just those things that I think I mentioned. Dates as well, I think. I think I can eat them cooked, but not. No, sorry, not dates. Figs. I can't have raw fig. Okay, let's crack on with some Kerbal Space Program. We're not here to talk about my allergies or anything else like that. We're here to crack right on. And yeah, it's it's not just fruits. It's like there's there's groups, and it tends to include quite a lot of fruits. Now, last time was my first live stream since we since I rebuilt my computer, and I deliberately didn't do another one until now because I needed time to fix any of the bits and bobs, and they should now be fixed. So my moderators should be able to change me to Kerbal Space Program building mode without me needing to do anything. It was supposed to be able to be working last time. Um, it was something relatively new that was... Th there we go! Jackamac changed the scene to Kerbal Space Program build. So if I forget to change the scene, one of my moderators can do it. Thanks for testing that, Jack. It worked. It worked! Fantastic! Fantastic! Thank you very much, real fella. So, um, yes, if you're just joining us, you haven't missed much. Uh, I've had a busy day. We started a tiny bit late. We did what happened since last time. Uh, my PC issue seemed to be good, and everything looks to be rolling and brilliant. So we're going to try and go to the moon. Um, now, before we go to the moon, I would like to make a plane. And I did already start doing this. Okay, so you may have noticed in the announcement on Discord, uh, this, TP1, Test Plane 1. And this is Test Plane 1, and it's essentially a drone. Toilet Paper 1. It's not Toilet Paper 1. It's a drone. It's got a command node in here. Now, it's the, got, it's, this is the Probodobodyne. Probobobodyne. Or whatever it is. Um, it's the one that can follow, follow prograde and retrograde as well as some batteries and it's got a solar panel on the top. We're at the we're actually over the parts limit, so we can't fly this off the runway. But we can actually move this to the space plane hangar and take off from there. So if we wanted to, we could do. And I was just toying around for this, mainly for the screenshot, but if you guys want <laughs> teleport, not teleport, DJ egg. Transport, no, what test plane we had tr1 test rocket one test plane one this is a test plane now it can carry a pilot if we want to but it'll fly without and if we need to use this for any reason we can do but i don't really see us needing to unless you guys tell me something specific you want to see or anything like that so let me know what are those weird 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 bubble pods on the menu what is that DLC? Probably is DLC. I am running DLC. I can't remember which ones. I'm pretty sure I've got both of them. They're totally planned. It's No, totally planned ones. Um, so yeah, we have an option of this of flying this plane if we want to. Actually, we could grab ourselves some more science by taking this over to the nearby island. Yeah, should we do that? Let's do that. Let's do that. We'll do that. That's the first thing we'll do today. And then we'll try and go to the moon. Because this, this is easy in comparison. There are missions that need plane to test some boosters. That's a good point. That is a very good point. There is. Okay, so let's just put the mystery goo on the top. Uh, the dibby dibby on the side. And the other dobby dobby there. 
There we go. So now we've got a science version. Did you get any research on the airfield island? No. No, I didn't. This is what I'm talking about, Jack. So, the question is, do we take the pilot? I think we should take the pilot. Now, before we um, do anything else, I've moved the center of mass by adding this science junior. So, we're going to readjust the wings so that they go through the center of mass. You should visit the secondary island in the space center. There's also a pyramid in the desert. Yeah, there's all sorts. I don't think the pyramid in the desert, though, it counts as its own biome. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll stick parachutes all over this. And then our pilot, Lexi, can fly the plane. We'll actually put one of my, my Viewer Plus subscribers into the plane. Now, if you want to know more about Viewer Plus, you can head out to my website. So check that out. Yes, Jack, it's a point It's a point of interest. It's not an actual biome. Uh, so we've got Lexi in there. But Lexi... I mean, Lexi could fly it. But we've got the probe anyway. Because this is test plane one. And we're going to put about 8.3 million parachutes on it. How many, how many parachutes? How many different parachutes can I get on this? So we're not going to go ridiculously fast. So I think if we put parachutes on the wings through the center of mass, that's a good idea. And then if we do, we kind of want the back to touch down before the bottom. But then we don't want the whole thing to flip over, so I guess we should really put the chutes on the top there. So that's going to create more drag at the rear. And then I guess we put one at the front. Just to keep things level. Are they all in an action group? Oh, I, have, have I got access to action groups? I think I have. Switch editor. Here we go. There we go. Let's get this let's get this plane in the right. Okay, yes. So we've got we've got um action groups, which is brilliant because I can assign the trigger which I'm pretty sure is custom one. So if I do parachute parachute if I I can't hold control. So select parachute custom one or is it this custom one? Uh, deploy shoot deploy shoot and deploy shoot you should use drag shoots for planes unless you're going for a vertical landing that is very true drag shoots for brilliant for stopping planes uh, we are going for a vertical landing at my level of skill with the parts we've got available I don't and, and the first time I think the first time I'm flying this yeah, I'm flying with, with a joystick. I don't trust it to go right. So we're going to save that. Check that Lex is on... Oh no, Six is on board. Get out of there, Sixer. Sixer, you're the rocket pilot. Lexi, you're the plane pilot. Because you're cool. There we go. So yeah, we'll probably do that in the future uh, with the with the shoots and so forth. But this is purely... I can't fly planes very well. This plane's terrible. Let's just drop it out the sky sort of thing. So the first thing we're going to do is test the shoots. Um, and I've remembered to do it this time. So we've switched over to fly mode. Now in theory, if I pull this trigger on the back, all the shoots should launch. They didn't. Oh, they have, but they're not staged, I think. Let's stage. Or did they just not launch because we've landed? Okay, right, hang on. We're going to get it in the air. We're 
We're going to get it in the air and then try it. We're going to do a test. We'll do a test without, without Lexi on board. Seems like a good idea to me. Okay, test plane one. Switch over to the other editor. Look at the the action groups. Okay, so let's no, not action groups. Build. Let's turn the plane the right way around. Nope. Nope. Yep, yeah, there we go. So the plane's the right way around. Yeah, they didn't open because they didn't move. Yeah, so we're going to get this thing moving. So there it is. Test plane one. Save. And we're going to get action groups. And we're going to go... Oh, hang on. It didn't save my changes. Uh, fair enough. Okay, we're going to have to... We're going to have to build the science back onto it. Won't take long. Won't take long. And then we can talk about how we're going to get to the moon. Because I have no idea how I'm doing that yet. <laughs> it's going to be magic. It's just going to be press a button and moon. Oh, yeah. I really want to go to the moon. Do you want to go to the moon, Roy? Um, there we go. It's, it's sort of the right way around. There it is. The right way around now. Now, if I do the center of mass thing, is it going to work? Ah, uh, see, look, the wings are the wrong way. Ah, right. Center of lift. Ah, uh, right. Quick, back to the other editor. We're back to the other editor to do the wings because I can't. I think there is a button to switch the mode. There we go. But it's just quicker to do that. There we go. Um, awesome Moss impression, says Real Fella. Yes, it was Moss. I don't remember that from the line in the IT cloud. <laughs> what operating system is it running? Uh, Vista. We're going to die! <laughs> Oh dear. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's it's half decent impression. Right, if anybody hasn't seen that, brilliant British comedy series. Uh, fantastic. About IT nerds and geeks. Right, there's a treasure hunt going on. I fixed the plane. We just need to add the parachutes to it. And then we're going to try and take it out there all by itself. So, parachutes, we're going to put uh, two there. Oh, hang on. We'll put one up here. It's two there. Two here, and then one up there. I mean, it's upside down, but what, why is it upside down? I bet I can't select it now, can I? What's going on? Undo. Undo. Okay, I managed to undo it off the top. Let's try again. One parachute on the top. I did it! Right. Action groups. For the parachute. Custom action group 1. Deploy shoot. Custom action group. Deploy shoot. Deploy shoot. Back. Crew. No one. Save. Launch. I did save it this time. I'm pretty sure I saved it last time, but... Hey ho. The only problem is we've now got to get this off the launch pad, which not easy, not easy. But we'll give it a go nonetheless. So, uh, SAS on, throttle to maximum, and we'll stage once. Move the camera around. Throttle off. We'll slide down here. Um, have I not got steering on this? Steering enabled. 
Oh, it's because I... Right, we're in the wrong mode. We are in the wrong mode. We want to be in plane mode. Okay. It's because I took a plane off from the, the, launch, the ro launch pad. What? It's all back to front and sideways. Never mind. Never mind. We're just going to be... We're not going to be able to take this off, are we? Oh, well, never mind. Let's find out what happens. We're only testing the shoots. We're testing the, the command buttons and the shoots. So, full throttle. It'll be fine without the tail. Right. It's going up. Cut and shoots. There we go. So, my button for the shoots worked. And that's what we were testing. Uh, brakes. Recover vessel. Right then. Did I take Lexi out? Yes, I did. I am like very certain I took Lexi out. Now the only problem now is is that if I launch that from the launch pad, it's all messed up on its controls. So I don't know if I'll be able to fly it. Unless we launch it on a rocket. Then the controls will probably be okay. I know I need to use the landing strip, but I don't think I can afford to upgrade it. Let's have a look. So, vehicle assembly... Oh. We're in the space plane hangar, and the part limit is 30. It's the part limit I've got a problem with. How much would it cost to upgrade? See, it's going to cost a quarter of a million up to upgrade the part limit, so we're going to just cheese it off the launch pad for now. It'll be fine. Probably. Right. We're not going to take any crew, because this is dangerous. Right then. Let's give it a go, and this time... We'll try not to um, knock the tail off the aeroplane. So SAS on. Let's just have a look at that front wheel. Okay, so I want to go that way first. Right, here we go then. Full power and stage. No, oh, no, brakes, brakes. If we do this slowly, we might be all right. If we do this slowly, we might be okay. It's only a test. Got the wrong camera. We need to be in locked. There we go. Let's um think I should enable fine controls. It's not very stable. It's not very stable mainly because I keep pressing the wrong buttons because all the controls are messed up. But let's point ourselves roughly in the direction of the island. Which I think is that hill over there. It's because I launched it off the launch pad, that's why. Those wheels are really bad. They are Jack. Right, full throttle. Hopefully the SAS system will know what it's doing. Now because of the wing angle, this plane should take off by itself. There we go. Looking good. Fantastic. There we go. Test plane 1 is in the sky. We're going to have to design the moon lander next. You should change the fuel tanks to ke um, fantastic kerosene. Then you'll have more fuel for planes. Um, they they're liquid fuel as large as, and two of them are empty. I'm using them as just empty structural parts. There we are, fantastic, Jack. Indeed. So all I've got to do 
is get this over towards that control tower and deploy the chutes. All I've got to do. Whoa! Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. No, no. Oh my goodness, we're upside down. What's going on? Right, if I do that, is that good or bad? No, that's, that is also bad. Mayday, mayday, mayday. I think I might, I think I might have got it. Nope. It's, this is difficult to just guess the controls. I'm trying to, I, we're at full throttle. Shoots! I didn't, I didn't fire the shoots in time. I thought I could save it. Oh, never mind. Uh, we'll uh, we'll have to go back. Yeah, we're not we're not doing that. We're not flying the plane with the controls all messed up. I can't do it. We're going to have to go to the moon, and then come back and do that afterwards. Yeah. Right then, uh, what we've got here, explore Kerbin. Rendezvous two vessels in orbit of Kerbin. Not right yet. We we don't have any active. Completed, completed, completed. Explore the moon. Um, Where is it? Gather scientific scavenger. I mean, it, the the main problem I've got is because the controls are wrong. So I'm not going to bother until we can launch it from the airfield and that the controls are the right way around. Because I need to remap them in my brain, and that's not good. Um. Oh, hang on, look. I'd love to try and see a docking thing. Maybe. I, mean, I don't think we've got any docking ports, but we'll have to see. Uh, oh, hang on. I could have sworn there was a go to the moon and, like, do something. But here we go. We've got scientific data from space around Kerbin. Let's do that. Let's do that. KSP build. Um. Right here we go. Building time, folks. We've we've had one failure. Let's let's forget about that. So let's go with the commsat, and we'll change it from a commsat to a science sat, a sci sat. Okay, and for a sci sat, we need to remove the antennas. Um, I think we need to keep everything else. Oh, hang on a minute. We will still need some form of antenna. Uh, electrical. Have we got new solar panels? No, we have not. Okay. Uh, in that case... Command and control, is it? Uh, what is it? Is it electrical? Communications. There we go. So we want to get... A really good antenna that is not a relay. There we are, direct. This is what we want. So we'll put that antenna on the side there. What's the question? You think the antenna is a DLC thing as well? Quite possibly. It would be nice to know in the game, like if it was part of a DLC. But unfortunately, I don't recall all of the different parts. But never mind. So, uh, we've got a different antenna on it. We need to get science on here. So, it doesn't have to be all the science. But we may as well take the two ones that are small and that we can repeat. There we go. Size sat one. 
Uh, would you say that they're worth it, Hellish? I'm thinking of getting them since they've been in, uh, you've been enjoying KSP. I would say if they're on offer, I think they're definitely worth it, Jack. Uh, whether they, you think they're uh, worth it without the mean on offer is a whole different kettle of fish. Okay, so this should be perfectly good. Yeah, yeah, cool. Okay, let's get this onto the launch pad. This is SciSac Mark 1 to do the science mission. Let's just go, before we go, let's save this as a brand new ship. Let's check that there's no other... Um, what, what's the word I'm looking for? There's no other missions that we can do on the way. So we've got temperature service at the moon, explore Kerbin, that's um, specific rendezvous, which we will probably do that instead because I can't find the get land on the moon um, one. I can't find that at all. So we've got Ferry Taurus, Ant liquid fuel engine on suborbital trajectory over the moon, that's no good. Uh, Test manifold in flight over Kerbin. No, I don't think we've got anything. We've got anything that we want to really do right now. So let's get this science sat up. And then we'll see what the what the missions are like. So launch pad. Uh, science sat. Nobody on board. Because we don't want to kill anybody at this early stage of the game. There we go. Right. The end, uh, so yeah, we're just we've got we've already got two communication satellites in orbit. Uh, this is going to be a science satellite. I don't really care whereabouts the science satellite is in compared to everything else, but I think we're going to try and get it into like some weird sort of angled inclination. Uh, we've have we got bits lying around. Yeah, we've got debris. Okay, we'll sort them out later because we're going to have debris from this one as well. Okay, so this should be a relatively standard launch for us. Um, so hopefully I won't do it wrong. So um, SAS on, throttle to maximum. And uh, getting ready to, to launch. So do we do countdowns? Is that what we do? We, I can't remember. What, what do you think I should do from 10? Because normally I just do th uh, 3, 2, 1 and go. Are we happy with 3, 2, 1? A hundred, right. <laughs> T's 10. Okay, 3, 2, 1. I think, I think 3, 2, 1 is, is, is acceptable. Yeah, here we go then. Uh, so, throttle is up, SAS, staging looks good, and three, two, one. Okay, we have liftoff. Liftoff of SciSat 1. Uh, again, once we get past 100 meters per second with this rocket, I'm going to throttle down. Uh, the atmosphere is quite thick, and I don't want us to get much past 300 meters per second before we get higher up in the atmosphere. And um, that's the, that's some joystick. It's it's uh, it's the Thrustmaster. Conveniently named actually. So we're throttling down just a little bit more. And we'll get ready to start our turn. Those two boosters haven't quite spent just yet but I am going to start turning just a tiny weeny little bit well why are we spinning don't seem to be able to get this rocket over there we go right we're 12k up whoa whoa oh I am rusty I am very rusty. But I think I'm getting it again. Whoa. Whoa, steady. This is not the way up I wanted to go.
Okay. I think I've managed to stable it a little bit. I, I did go too vertical. Um, the thing is, is that I forget that this plane only has a gimbal um, on that one rocket engine. And at the time that I start my turn, I'm too low. And I'm not going fast enough. So I haven't got the thrust to actually get that engine to gimbal properly. Uh, you may recommend putting boosters on your opposite sides of left, right, not down. Okay, hang on a second. How we're doing, how we're doing, how we're doing. Well, we're looking quite good, actually. We've got a really good burn on this. I'll get orbit. Yeah, this has got this has got way, way too much delta V. And it looks like we're pretty much bang on the money from where I wanted this to be. So, that's 70 kilometres. We're coming up to 80, so I'm going to throttle off. And we've still got a good third. We've still got a good third. <laughs> Let's disable SAS and let it naturally stable uh, stabilise. I, I really don't think that would work in this scenario. I really don't think that would work in this situation. Okay, so this is the orbit we've managed, what well, the suborbital orbit we've managed to get. We've got 80 kilometres up and we should be alright. This is good. I'm still using the old probes on this. I haven't got prograde and retrograde, which we unlocked. Never mind. Okay, we're in space. It would have been better to have the prograde and retrograde, but never mind. Maybe you need better AI. I need the other kind of, um, the other, uh, what do you call it? The other controller. So, so what we're going to do, now we're 78 kilometers up. We're going to try and go almost perfectly prograde on this. And now we're out in the atmosphere, I can control it with minimal thrust. Okay, so that's almost perfectly prograde. We're going to throttle it right up. And check to see how we're going on this. I think I've got an almost perfect 45. Might need better AI. No, I've unlocked it, Brandon. I just didn't change the design of the spaceship. I forgot. Now, it looks like we've just gone past the highest point. Which is not ideal. We may have to adjust our angle to get this. Oh, no, hang on. No, we're catching it. Oh, we've gone ahead. We've gone ahead. Our, the thing is, is that our thrust um, remains the same. But our thrust to weight ratio does not. So as we burn more fuel and get lighter, we get faster, easier. So I'm just gentling on the, uh, on the, on the, on the, on the power there. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna throttle. There, I'm just cutting the throttle off because we've almost made an orbit, and I want to push it out to a nice even orbit. Eighty, eighty would be quite nice, and we're we're eighty kilometers at that point. So if I can use the engine to get the, us the rest of the way on the periapsis, that'd be great. Now my problem is is that we are not on our prograde marker, so this orbit is getting slightly skewed. And I'm just using the reaction wheels here to sort it, to sort us out. And burn. We're at 72 on the other side. I'm looking at the numbers on the other side of the screen. 70, uh, the bottom left-hand corner. 
and there's an 8080 orbit absolutely perfect not only have we got enough fuel left in the rocket but we haven't even expended all the fuel in the first stage which is absolutely brilliant so we're going to uh, make sure that the oh it doesn't matter i'll adjust it in a second i didn't mean to throttle up then we'll, we'll separate we'll stage separate we'll activate that engine and let's just see what's going on here okay so we've passed that point there so if we just turn it round I should be able to fix it and this will be easy to turn around because it's got the same reaction control system that is in the whole aircraft except it's just a lot smaller so it's got less to pull so we're going to unlock the bay open extend the antenna the antenna is pointing uh, globe side and actually because I did that adjustment <laughs> The first stage is flying past us. Fantastic. So in theory now, we should be able to complete this contract to transmit or recover scientific data from space. So if we do a temperature log, keep the experiment, but then transmit data. There we are. Congratulations. Contract complete. We get a load of money, some science, and some reputation. Fantastic. And we can leave that in space. Hey! Right then. So we'll delete those messages. I... <laughs> expertly done i don't know if i'd have said expertly done but definitely done <laughs> successful um you just looked and you do have one of those communication thingies yes apparently the the dish is best for relay but not necessarily for something else jack so i don't know Right then, what we'll do is we'll go over to our tracking station. I don't know if we're going to get to the moon t today, folks, because we're doing contracts, and the contract that I thought was here isn't. So we've got uh, TR6 de uh, debris. We'll terminate that. TR6 debris there. Terminate that. Those are probably from the comm satellites. Uh, the TP1, the test plane 1 debris, we'll recover that. That broke up in the water, didn't it? And then the SISAT debris will terminate that as well. So now we have a ComSat, uh, two ComSats and a science satellite. And that is actually, if we fly that, we need to change the type of it, I think. Right, uh, let's see. So can we go configure vehicle naming? Oh, actually, it's not a relay. I think, actually, oh, well, science? Probe. We'll leave it as probe. Okay. Now, the next thing I'm wondering, can we do the same, but get it to the moon? And if we can, what, can, what do we need to change about the rocket to get it there, apart from me fly it properly? So let's open up the SISAT one. So this is the SISAT one. This is the one that we want to put. A bigger engine. Maybe a bigger engine, Jack. But the first thing we're going to do is actually rip the bottom of the um, of it off. Actually, we'll rip more than the bottom off. We'll rip the entire thing out. Take all the science off it. And put the other core on. So this core is the one that does prograde and retrograde hold which will be very handy for us so we've got that now we should hopefully be able to put our rocket back on this somehow so we've got our reaction wheels we've got our battery we've got our power we've got our antenna so then we can put some science on this so the only science we can put on this, bigger fuel tanks. The thing is, um, Egg, if we put more fuel tanks or bigger fuel tanks, 
then we're going to need bigger engines for sure. I've got a funny feeling that we could probably get this to the moon as it is. Uh, but the only two pieces of science that we can repeat quite easily are these two. The Science Junior is non-renewable and the Mystery Goo is non-renewable. They're the only two renewable ones we have at the moment. Okay. So what I was thinking is that we just change it from having two side boosters to having four side boosters and burn them for longer. That's that's what I was thinking, folks. I mean, tell, tell me if you think I'm balmy, but what's wrong with that? More boosters is always the answer. I'm not sure if more boosters is always the answer. Uh, we have got a very high thrust to weight ratio, though, in our first stage now. We do need to get our structural nodes back on. There we go. Um, what else do we need to do? I think that's it. I think that's it. If we just adjust the thrust limiter for these, we can... There we go. Look. A thrust to weight ratio of 1.4. Any fins? I think we're going to need fins on this. I think we're going to have to cheat and put some fins on it. Just to help. Um, some winglets. Put some winglets on it like that. To get it going. So it's the same rocket, except we've got uh, we've quad boosters instead of dual boosters. Yeah, thrust limiting on boosters is brilliant because you can change the amount of fuel that's in there and you can change the, 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 the rate of the thrust. You just can't change it in flight. It's a brilliant thing. You can get one of these boosters to burn slow and long if you really need it to for some reason. Okay. This is game changing. I don't think it's game changing, Jack. It's just. Yeah, we'll see. Right then, uh, SciSat. I don't know if this is going to be. SciSat. Is... Do we have to call this Moon SciSat? One? Was it just going to be SciSat 2? Mark 1 Plus. Well, it's, it's the it's, it's the Mark 1M. For Moon variant. Um, oh, hang on a minute. I'm, there should be a space here. Okay, let's let's save that. Delete that one. We can always rename them once they're up there. Okay, so this is the SciSat Mark 1M, and once we get it into into its orbit, we'll it'll be a moon something. So the idea is is the first stage, discounting the, the side boosters, should almost get us to the moon. Then we only have to use the top stage to do the rest a little bit of the journey. And so forth. Uh, right then. Uh, I don't see why we shouldn't just get this out to the launch pad. So let's go. I know we did change the core. But the layout. We only changed the core to get that extra stability. So we'll see. Right then folks. Here we go. So in theory. Um... In theory, we should have a, a relatively quick trip to the moon now. Uh, but we have got the staging wrong. So let's just switch that staging around. Yep, the staging's all fine now. Okay, so uh, SAS on. Throttle to maximum. 
and satellite to the moon. Three, two, one, launch. Okay, that's a good launch. Nice and clean, not quite quick. It's doing okay. We'll rename it once it's there, because if, if I fail, then we can try again. And it'll be all right. Uh, right, let's have a see. Let's, uh, let's throttle back now. Oh, hang on. Where are those winglets? Oh, no. The winglets, I think, were attached to the launch jobbies. Oh, now we're going too fast. And we've only just gone halfway through our solid fuel. I'm going to have to throttle up to get more control. Trying to get it to come over, but it won't. Come on! Oh, never mind. Whoa! It's almost sideways. There we go. There we go. Back on track. Come on. There we go. Oh dear. Well, we did get a nice long burnout of that. Oh my goodness, we've already reached space. I haven't even used half the fuel on the first stage yet. We've already reached space, even though I went a bit wrong. Hey, it looks like it's going quite well. Okay, let's have a look. Yeah, that's, that's pretty level actually. It's a little bit off. Where's our science satellite? I mean the other one, not the one we're trying to launch now. It's disappeared. Can you hear the 3D printer? Uh, no, that's actually something vibrating on the top of my computer. No idea what that is. So, I'm going to just set this thing to prograde. And we're going to just burn this orbit out. This is what I wanted to be able to do, just set it to prograde. Because then I can just concentrate on throttle. It's going to be a little bit wonky. This this will get a lot easier once we get manoeuvre nodes and stuff like that. Okay, we need a bit more throttle than that. I'm just trying to keep us just keep that uh, that node there, no, the uh, Acropolis. Is that how I say it? I can't remember now. Just in front of us. I'm at th full power now, though, and we're catching up on it. But, like I say, the more fuel we use, the lighter we get, the faster we go. We should be getting close to being... Oh, we're going to go past it. That's not ideal. Okay, stability assist. Let's push it in front of us by changing our orbit. Adjustments were needed, that's right, Jackamac. Adjustments were needed... We're getting lighter though. And uh, I think we can afford to go prograde. Let's go prograde. No, look at that. Still catching up on it. Right, more adjustments. Just a little bit. Whoa. Here we go. Well, oh, steady. We've gone too far ahead in front of it now. We're, at, we're 90 kilometres up. It's starting to get a bit busy in the orbit of Kerbin, isn't it? <laughs> Science satellites and communication satellites. We're going to do rendezvous and all sorts. Uh, probably rendezvous next time, I think. Okay, let's see. With the amount of fuel that we've got left in this, we should be able to push this into a very nice orbit. And give ourselves a bit of a kick to the moon. 
Right. <laughs> Rendezvous is your favourite ABBA song. I'm t you know what? I'm not actually that uh, big fan of ABBA. Not not my sort of thing. Whoa! I went past it. Right. Uh, do you have the breaking ground DLC? Because then you can make a mining base on the moon. I think I do. Brandon, I think I have all the DLCs because of how much I really like this game. And I was like, you want to give me more Kerbal Space Program? I'll take it. So we now need to wait until we're somewhere around here in the orbit. We're a bit late on the orbit to be able to do anything. Let's turn the SAS off and speed up time. It's a bit difficult to see because I'm trying to keep eyes on the moon. We'll try, I'm trying to keep the moon at about my three o'clock as we go around the planet. That's the way that I learned to get to the moon. Right. Here we go. And there. Right. So what we do is once we're in this position, we get the ship to go uh, SAS on. I'm going to switch prograde on. Give a tiny amount of throttle to help it turn. And then once once we get on the mark, we just full throttle it. This is why having the prograde is so so much better. Being able to just set it to prograde and just let it go. You think the next satellite would orbit the moon, right? There, this this is what this one's doing. This one's going to the moon. Whoa. Right. Uh we've we've actually got ourselves I think roughly where we want to be with that burn and we've got the slightest bit of fuel left in here. I've got a pretty good sat network. It's not a song. It was just a reference to a real song. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry, Jack. I, I was concentrating on my burn. So I'm now going to separate from the first stage. And we will activate that engine. And... That's it, actually. We're, going, <laughs> we're just going to a uh, coast, I think, until... Until we get about halfway... Then we're going to try... Or should we try and skew it now? No, we're going to try and skew it now. That orbit needs to be um, twisted and aligned. So, at the moment, the air, uh, the spaceship is trying to get back to... Back to the uh, prograde, because I accidentally left it on that setting. So now, if I just put ourselves here, what does this do to our orbit? Okay, that's shifting it that way, which... Yeah, it could be alright. Let's do normal. And we'll see if that works. If the normal doesn't, then we'll try anti-normal. Oh, it looks like the normal's working. Yep, yep, yeah. Perfect. Okay, so that burn was a relative... Oh, oh we shot past it a little bit. Retrograde. A little retrograde burn, please. Otherwise, we're going to come in too hot. There. Okay, that'll do. Let's find out if we've managed to get an intercept with the moon. So we're already separating from our debris. The long-range sat network seems to be working. Well, hang on a second. Let's extend this antenna. Hey, full signal strength. <laughs> we were slowly, slowly losing signal strength. Okay. Let's continue with our time lapse. Yep, yeah, that's doing good. Now, what I expect is for this to actually go out and the moon to catch up with us on our way back in. 
So there it is. We've got we've just gone out past the moon's orbit. And now as we're slowing down, we slow down as we reach this this apex of this elliptical orbit. Is an apex the right word? Could be. Whoa, there we go. Perfect. Perfect. Just what I was looking for. Look at that. Okay, so let's time warp until we're on the very curvy bit of the banana. And then, because we've got the satellite that can prograde and retrograde, we can just use that to put ourselves in an orbit. I'm not 100% sure what's going on with this. The debris... <laughs> The debris is going the other way. We could end up crashing into it. I don't think we will. Okay, so... Zenith is the word for a propolis. Zenith is the point immediately above you in the sky. So I th don't know if it's got dual purpose or whether you potentially are mistaken, but that's what Zenith means. The point immediately above you in the sky. Okay, so we're going to have to use a good bit of fuel to bend this orbit round. There we go. But, yeah, that's pretty good. I suppose we could probably keep burning. I, I, 50k? 50k seems a bit high. Let's get it at about 30k above the moon. There we go. Our oh, zenith also means the highest point, but you might be wrong. Okay, so yeah, zenith is definitely the highest uh, point directly above you uh, in the sky. So there's, there is that side of things. So it might also mean something else. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, go around to our periapsis. There goes our debris. It's going to slingshot round. Now, that's an interesting thing, actually. Where's that debris going to go? Because it's going to slingshot round the moon and it's going to end up somewhere else. So our craft is turning retrograde again. And I'm just going to bring this down to 30 kilometers as well. I'm just using throttle, no other controls. 80. 49, 8, 7. That's 40. And... There's a 30-30 orbit. We have a science satellite in orbit of the moon. How easy was that? Look at that. We've got most of our fuel still left. We'll take a temperature reading. And, yeah, and we'll transmit it. And it works. We can log a pressure data and transmit that. And it works. I mean, we don't get any science for it, but if we ever have a contract just to retrieve data from the moon, we've got it. Jobs are good. So we've got about half a million. We need to do some pretty big contracts now, so let's, let's find out what we've got. We can decline some. So I think maybe we need to think about that. So we need to conduct observational surveys. EVA report on the surface near three places. Where are those sites? Well, maybe we'll go and have a look at them. Observational surveys of Kerbin... I don't think we're really ready for this. Actually, let's get rid of these because they're going to require planes and we're not ready for planes yet. So let's decline that contract. Oh, we didn't like that, did he? You'd love to see a flight to those sites. Yeah, I'm going to do a decent paint plane build later in the series. Uh, explore Kerbin. So this is the rendezvous of two vessels. Um, we could almost certainly do that. Uh, I don't know what it means, but by rendezvous, whether we actually have to connect them or they just have to be close to each other. Yep, 
yeah, NASA are planning to go return to the moon and go on to Mars. So it's going to be some exciting stuff happening there. Let's do that. Let's do a rendezvous. They want me to test a parachute in flight. And they're going to give us some relatively good money for it. So we'll accept that as well. So let's do our parachute test first. They don't need to be connected, they just have to be close and zero relative speed. Okay, we can do that, Jack. What we can do is we can send... Hmm. Maybe we can send up a satellite to go alongside our other one. Although we have actually gone over the amount of time that this stream's supposed to be up. Because this stream, <laughs> this stream was supposed to finish at half nine. So I tell you what we'll do, we'll do the Mark 16 parachute flight, and rendezvous two vessels. No, two different vessels in orbit of Kerbin, with a visual range of each other, and kill their relative to velocities. I think we'll start with that next time, and. We'll just keep doing the little missions to get the money to unlock the stuff for the planes. Because we really need that. So let's start from afresh. We need to do uh, the parachute test in flight over Kerbin. So let's go with a core. Let's go with some fuel. Um, let's put an engine on the bottom of that. And then the Mark 16 parachute on the top. And what we'll do is we'll assign that Mark 16 parachute to the action group. Uh, test the parachute which presumably means deploy it so we'll do that deploy and then we'll also put a parachute on the side for coming back because it'd be nice to recover these parts Okay, uh, let's see if we can do this. It, it shouldn't be too bad. We're on Kerbin. We're going to be flying. We need to get up to three kilometers. I'm not sure we'll get up to three, but we'll give it a good go. So, SAS on, throttle to maximum, and launch. Okay. Throttle in down immediately. We're going to cruise at 140. Yeah, this is going to be easy. The only thing is keeping the speed down. That's what's going to be difficult. Yep, speed's correct. We're getting to the right altitude. We're at the right altitude. Let's deploy. There we go. That should... Did we miss the speed? I don't know. I'm not sure if we missed it then by like a fraction of a second. Let's pull it back down to the ground really quickly. This will probably be fine. I think I saved that. Set the engine. I, I maybe it was the wrong shoot. Maybe I just didn't do it at the right at the right time. Okay, let let's try let's try again. Let's let's do that again. So let's just check the action controls. Custom one. Deploy shoot. I think I just fired it when we were going too slow. Let's try again. This cost us next to nothing and it's going to give us some good money. I think. I hope. Right, SAS on. Full throttle. Let's get up there. Let's get the mission requirements on the screen. 
So we're going fast enough. Let's slow down. We're going at the right speed. We're climbing in altitude. Speed still within range. Ste speed dropping slightly, but I'm, I'm, I'm adjusting. Everything's in range. Right, here we go. No. All those are green. I don't get it. Is it when it actually deploys out? Because we're about to hit 100 meters per second coming back down again. Did I deploy the right one? Yes, I did. There we are, I just staged the parachute. So deploying the parachute didn't seem to work. Staging the parachute worked. To me, that's not how it's meant to be. And now we'll cut the chute. Should we try and repulsively land this? Should we give it a go? Just, just as a bit of fun before the end of the stream. Here we go then. Suicide burn. It's not going to happen. Oh wait, maybe it is. Coming down at 30 metres per second. 18... 19 meters per second, 20 meters per second we're coming down at. We're going to go right next down to the VAB. We've got 100 meters per get to go. It's yawing about all over the place. This will probably work. Uh oh. Ah, I think what I needed to do is once it was going down straight stability assist not retrograde I want to try that again we did the mission we did the contract we got 22,000 for just far flying that little tiny rocket hmm oh, I want to do it I want to do it Let, let's do it let's, let's, let's do it again we're going to do that. I, I want to land this. I think I can land it. Here we go then, folks. It's not going to cost much. What is it, like three, or 4,000 to launch this rocket? I don't know. Right, SAS on throttle maximum. And we'll swap the chutes around. No, we won't. We'll just leave the chutes all in one stage there for a... Yeah. Make yourself a floating landing platform and try and land it on there. Jack, that would be for a day live stream because I'd have to design and build the floating platform, get it all the way out there, build a rocket that can do it, and then try it a million times to make it happen. It's not going to work. Okay, here we go. Full throttle, up we go. We'll just go past a kilometer. I think anything more than that... I mean, we're the only thing we're doing now is proving that we can land this um, on its bum. A 24-hour KSP stream. You know, I'd like to do that. It would be too much. It'd be too much. Um, right, we're going to try and get this retrograde. There we go. We're burning this slowly down retrograde. We're still accelerating. But as soon as our money is on the right point, we're going to switch from retrograde to stability assist.
We're actually hovering slightly. Dropping the power so that we bring it down. Not going to touch the yoke. We're going to just keep this thing pointing more or less straight up. 70 meters up. 50 meters. Got a slight sideways motion on it. Oh, we're going up. Oh my, I can't, I can't keep this. Whoa. Turn round, turn round. No. No. Maybe if I had landing legs or something. <laughs> oh dear, it's fine. It's it's fine. Don't worry. It's it's not a it's not a problem, folks. Well, folks, um, there we go. How much did that cost us? I'm just wondering. Three grand. Oh yeah, it cost us three grand for that little bit of fun. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, maybe in the future we'll get better at that. I mean, I was trying to just, yeah. We'll we'll see. We'll see. But so far we have done quite well. We've done a couple of contracts down on the ground. We've got our first science satellite around Kerbin, and we also put a science satellite around the moon. So looking pretty good. I'm hoping that we get a contract to land on the moon sometime soon. So what I might do is I might do some of these like really mundane ones between now and next time like the decoupler landed at Kerbin that's just like land uh, it's just like you don't even have to launch um it's weird that it wants me to position a, po a satellite in a polar orbit of the moon but yet it doesn't want me to visit the moon yet so I don't know whether I've missed something oh and we'll also do the rendezvous at the beginning of next time but that is all for this time Thank you very much, everybody, for joining me. Um, I'm starting to get back on track with everything now. We're starting to get back up to speed with all the streams, the right things here and there and all that sort of thing, the right settings and so forth. So thanks to all the viewers for your help and especially the Viewer Plus subscribers and, of course, the moderators. Remember, uh, if you want to know more about Viewer Plus, you can head out to my website and I will see you all soon. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye for now.